Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. My name is Catherine Engelbrecht, and I'm the chairwoman of True the Vote, a nonprofit election integrity organization. The founder of King Street Patriots, a citizen led liberty group, and president of Engelbrecht Manufacturing. Thank you for this opportunity to share my story with you today, though. At the outset, it must be said that it is a story with a central theme that is shared by countless thousands of other Americans who have not yet been heard from, though I pray that they will be. It must be made publicly known that across this country, citizens just like me are being targeted by an administration willing to take any action necessary to silence opposition. I am an average American who prior to 2009 had never been active in the processes of government. But after volunteering to work in the polls in Texas in the 2009 elections, I saw fundamental procedural problems that I felt couldn't go unaddressed. So I started True the Vote, an organization that grew into a national movement to ensure that every American voter has an opportunity to participate in elections that are free and fair. My life before I got involved and spoke out for good government stands in stark contrast to the life I now lead. As a wife, a mother, a small businesswoman working with my husband, raising our children and participating in my church and PTA, the government collected my taxes and left me and my family in peace. But once I helped found through the vote in King Street Patriots, I found myself a target of this federal government. Shortly after filing IRS forms to establish 501c3 and c4 tax exempt organizations, an assortment of federal entities, including law enforcement agencies and Congressman Cummings, came knocking at my door. In nearly two decades of running our small business, my husband and I never dealt with any government agency outside of filing our annual tax returns. We'd never been audited, we'd never been investigated. But all that changed upon submitting applications for the nonprofit statuses of True the Vote and King Street. Since that filing in 2010, my private businesses, my nonprofit organizations, my family, and I have been subjected to more than 15 instances of audit or inquiry by federal agencies. In 2011, my personal and business tax returns were audited by the Internal Revenue Service, each audit going back for a number of years. In 2012, my business was subjected to inspection by OSHA on a select occasion when neither my husband or I were present, and though the agency wrote that it found nothing serious or significant, it still issued fines in excess of $20,000. In 2012 and again in 2013, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms conducted comprehensive audits at my place of business, and beginning in 2010, the FBI contacted my nonprofit organization on six separate occasions wanting to call through membership manifests in conjunction with domestic terrorism cases. They eventually dropped all matters and have now redacted nearly all my files. All of these incursions into my affairs began after filing applications for tax exemption. There is no other remarkable event. There's no other reason to explain how for decades I went unnoticed, but now find myself on the receiving end of interagency coordination into and against all facets of my life, both personal and private. Bear in mind, distinguished ladies and gentlemen of this subcommittee, these events were occurring while the IRS was subjecting me to multiple rounds of abusive inquiries with requests to provide every Facebook and Twitter I'd ever posted, questions about my political aspirations and demands to know the names of groups that I'd spoken with, the content of what I'd said and everywhere I intended to speak in the coming year. The answers to these sorts of questions are not of interest to the typical IRS analyst, but they are certainly of interest to a political machine that would put its own survival against the civil liberties of a private citizen. This government attacked me because of my political beliefs, but I refuse to be cast as a victim. Not to the IRS, not to the FBI, not to OSHA, not to the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, or to any other government agency. I am not a victim because a victim has no options. I do have options, and I intend to use them to the fullest extent of my capabilities. As an American citizen, I am part of a country that still believes in freedom of speech, and so I will continue to speak out. Here in Congress and all across this country, I will continue to press in every legal way possible, as I did by filing suit against the Internal Revenue Service. No American citizen should be willing to accept a government that uses its power against its own people. 
After all the tyranny and all the things that have been done to my organizations, to my family, and to me, many people would quit, and Mr. Chairman, many Americans have quit. I've heard over and over that people are afraid to tell their stories. But know this. My experience at the hands of this government in the last five years have made me more determined ever than before to stand before you and to all of America and say that I will not retreat, I will not surrender, I will not be intimidated, and I will not ask for permission to exercise my constitutional rights. I come before you today, Mr. Chairman, on behalf of Americans just like me, asking for a solution to end this ugly chapter of political intimidation. There was a time when people of goodwill were encouraged to participate in the processes of government, not targeted because of it. I applaud your request of the Internal Revenue Service to withdraw a proposed regulation limiting political speech by nonprofit organizations. That action should be taken quickly and without fail because if it is not, it will effectively codify into law the very thing that brings me here today. If those regulations pass, nonprofit organizations across the country will be destroyed. No American, regardless of their political affiliation, should support the silencing of political speech. Beyond ending the proposed IRS regulations, I ask you, I implore you, as representatives to the people of this great nation, to pass a law that protects all citizens of this country from the increasing use of such abusive practices. Pass a law that exposes government officials who trample on the rights of ordinary citizens. Do not allow them to continue to cower behind a veil of secrecy, abuse, unethical, and unfair behavior. Send the President a bill that makes public at the option of persons and entities regulated, all communication between government agencies and those they regulate, no restricted, redacted, selectively re released files. Give us a truly transparent process. Protect the people. Restore liberty to the people, because we will not be silenced. Thank you for this opportunity, Mr. Chairman and committee's members. Thank you, Ms. Engelbrecht.